Good evening. Welcome for Healing for Today. This is Apostle Clint Potters. We're so glad, amen, to be teaching the Word of God tonight. Uh, thank God for you, those that are watching us uh, via television, those that are watching us via Android, iPhone. It's such a blessing, amen, just to be able to teach the Word of God. We call this program Healing for Today. I believe it all in my heart. God has given me many assignments in these last days, and one of these assignments is to bring a revelation of the healing power of God to the people of God uh, in these last days. We all know there are so many things that are going on in our society and things that are happening. And isn't it a refreshing thing to know that Jesus has a solution to every problem. He has the antidote to everything that you need in your personal life. And so we're going to get into the Word of God tonight as we talk about healing for today. I just want to encourage you, uh, many of you that have been watching this on our broadcast, thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast in your particular city or your particular state on your particular uh, station that you're watching. For those that are in the Vidalia, Miss Lou area, thank you so much for watching us on Cable One. For those that are, are watching us in other particular states and cities related to, to uh, your iPhone, Android, and other devices that you're using, we count it a blessing, amen, to uh, be in the house of God one more time, and amen. And we're talking about healing for today. I do want to encourage you uh, that you are, those that are watching us via the website, you're watching us on www.clintonpotters.org. That's www.clintonpotters.org. Thank you so much for viewing us on the website. We do indicate to you there's resources and information uh, for you to go ahead and look at so that you can see what we're doing. These broadcasts are pre-recorded, amen, for those of you that need to go back on our website. For those that are watching us live at this particular moment, we do appreciate you because God is doing so many wonderful things as it relates to the healing power of God. And so today we're going to go into the book of St. John, the 10th chapter, I'm teaching a message today. I've, I've had a question proposed to me quite some time, and I've really been thinking about it actually for the last four or five days of talking about living life. And I was really meditating on it, and really God gave me a message that I really want to talk about choosing life tonight, choosing life relative to your body and to everything. And so uh, gave me some stalling revelation. So I believe if you will watch and listen to what we're saying today, today, those that are listening to us by radio, uh, amen, if you go ahead and get your information out and pen and pencil ready to go, I believe I have a word of the Lord for you that would totally impact your life. St. John, the 10th chapter version is what we're going to go to here, and we're going to bring some things out. And we're talking about choosing life, choosing life, concerning your health, choosing life. Uh, the Bible says in St. John, the 10th chapter, verse 10, it says, the thief comes not except to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. One of the things we're going to look at this particular passage of Scripture, there's certain things that are going on. First of all, we see that there is a thief, there's a robber. Uh, the Bible refers to him as Satan. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we see here that Satan has three uh, purposes that uh, dimension or three purposes that he has in life. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So he's trying to steal from you, kill you, and perhaps destroy your life. But the Bible says, Jesus says, I have come that they may have what? Life and have it more abundantly. So when we look here concerning the life of God, I say choose life because there are so many people I'm not choosing life today. They're choosing other things rather than life. And so when I hear the things about I want to live my life, I want to be the life that God has for me, or I want to live life, I start thinking of back and really meditating on this because I was telling somebody the life that I'm living now is the life that, that, that God chose for me. It's a life, amen, that I'm so happy to do it. And so, so many people are not really happy with their life. They don't understand what life is. And so, when you ask people, what is life? Some people say, well, life is having a better job. Uh, some people say life is, you know, uh, you know, spending time with families and relatives and so forth. And, and, and life is this and life and that. And, and, you know, there's different aspects of that. But let's see what the Bible says about life, because when we really look at life, you must understand that part of your life that God has for you, according to the Word of God, you're going to see it's a blessed life. So let's describe what the Word of God says. He says, Satan comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus says, I have come that they may have life. Now, the first word of the word life, L-I-F-E, it's referring to eternal life. 
So in other words, when Jesus came to this earth, he came to provide you eternal life. What is eternal life? Eternal life is where you can live in a place forever and ever with Jesus Christ. It is what I call the life of God. So the Bible says, first of all, he comes to give life. So when, preachers say, when people say, well, you know what? I want to enjoy life. Well, first of all, you can't have life without Jesus. Remember that. I cannot have life without Jesus. So the first thing he does, he gives us what I call eternal life. Well, how do I get eternal life? What the Bible says in Romans 10, chapter verse 9, if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart that God is risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So once a person confesses Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they believe in their heart that God has raised him from the dead, instantly they have the very life of God on the inside of them. Now, 1 John 5, 13 is something that I want you to really look at tonight as well as we're talking about choosing life because life is what all of us need. 1 John 5, 13 said this, These things have I written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Now, notice the Bible talks about in 1 John 5, 13, because some people say it like this, well, I, know, I don't know whether I'm going to have eternal life until I die. Well, let me tell you something, dear heart. You better know you have eternal life before you die. 1 John 5, 13 says, I'm writing unto you that you may know you have eternal life. Well, how am I going to know that I have eternal life? I must believe in the Son of God. So once I believe in the Son of God, eternal life has been deposited on the inside of me now because now Jesus is there. So when people say, I want life, they have to get Jesus who gives them what? Life. So the first thing God Jesus does, he gives you eternal life. Well, you got to qualify for eternal life. Well, eternal life come when I believe on what? The Son of God. So notice he said, when you know, you know you have eternal life. Why? Because you have Christ. So that's the first life he's talking about. Let's go back to St. John, the 10th chapter, verse 10. Because I want to bring some things out tonight. He says, the feet coming out, but the steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I have come to have that you may have life. So the first life is eternal life. Then he says, I also come that you may have life more abundantly. Now, this is where I want to camp out today. Because most folks understand eternal life. Most folks want to go to heaven. I thank God for that. That's my desire too. But I want to talk to you and make you really think tonight. Jesus did not save you just to go to heaven. I want you to think about that. Jesus did not save you just for you to go to heaven by itself. Because if that's the case, as soon as a person gets saved, they might as well go ahead and give up the ghost and go straight on to heaven. Jesus didn't save you just to go to heaven. He saved you to impact people's lives so you can enjoy what I call the abundantly life of God. Because you hear people say, I just want to enjoy my life. I just want to enjoy my life. Well, I'm going to show you how to enjoy the life that God told you to have. Well, first of all, I cannot enjoy my life until I have eternal life. That's why he said in John 10 and 10, I come that you may have life. That's eternal life. Then the second life is, he says, abundantly life. What is he talking about? And life more abundantly. So when we're talking about enjoying life, when we look at the word life, it comes from what I call the Greek word zoe. It's called the God kind of life, zoe. He said, I come that you have eternal life, but I also come that you may have what I call the zoe, the God kind of life. Because when you look at people in society, people are not living anymore. People are pre preparing to get up out of here. I always tell Christian people sometimes, sometimes Christian people have what I call a rapture mentality. What do I mean by a rapture mentality? The Bible talks about the day is coming when Jesus is going to come back and gather the saints, and we're going to be raptured up out of here. The Bible said that those uh, bodies are going to be uh, changed from what I call a physical body to a celestial body. 
uh, within the twinkling of an eye. We're going to go from uh, uh, more, uh, immort mortality to immortality. In other words, we're going to go from the physical to the spiritual. We're going to have a, from a physical body to what I call a heavenly body or a celestial body, as the Bible talks about. And so when we're talking about the rapture, we understand from the Bible that one day you and I are going to get rapture off, out, out of this earth uh, uh, so that we can go back with Jesus. Amen. And so sometimes Christian people have what I call a rapture mentality. What do you mean by that? They're ready to leave the earth. It's not time to leave the earth. You have time to live. And so I see people that they're trying to get up out of here when God said, listen here, I did not save you for you to leave this earth at 35. I didn't save you for to leave this earth at 45, 65. No, God has given you the abundantly life of God. And so once we don't understand life, what we do, we compare life from what we think life is according to the Bible, or we compare it according to the world. Because the world says, girl, you know what? You're not living life until you're doing this and you're doing that. And so now we have a false uh, sense of what true life is. We think when we look on television, we say, okay, he got a nice car. He's really living a good life. Or when she has a good family, she's really living a good life. Well, when you look at the Bible, you're going to begin to find out what God's Word says about life. Well, first of all, in order to have what I call the life of God in you, according to the Scripture here, the first thing we got to understand is what is the life of God? What is God's life? Go ahead and write this down. The life of God is able to enjoy the benefits of God in this earth while impacting other people. I'll say it again. The life of God is enjoying the benefits of God in the earth while imparting or impacting other people's lives. In other words, God did not save you just for yourself. God saved you to impact somebody else's life to make it better. Now, notice here. So he came so that we may have abundantly life. So why is there so many Christian people trying to get up out of here? And I was telling somebody earlier today, do you realize a suicide is a self-esteem? Do you realize when people have suicidal thoughts, it's selfish? Because at that moment, they're only concerned about themselves. They're not concerned about how it's going to impact other people's lives. And so you have to understand this. When the Bible talks about the abundantly life, there is a life that God wants you to live. Many of you will say this, and I've heard this back in the day. When that great day comes, I'm going to rejoice. I can't wait till I get to heaven because when I get to heaven, there'll be no more crying. There'll be no more dying. We're going to love one another. We're going to have joy unspeakable. We're going to enjoy what God wants us to have. Well, let me tell you something. I'm trying to encourage people, you can have that type of life that I just said on the earth. People waiting to get to heaven to have the joy of God. They're waiting to get to heaven so they won't cry anymore. They're waiting to get to heaven to do all of this. When God said, I have come that you may have life, it's eternal life, and then have that more abundantly. So notice here, what did the scripture say? Jesus said, do you remember the Lord's prayer? He said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, so forth and so on. Then he says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So in other words, God's desire or Jesus' desire is the kingdom of God life that's in heaven. You can have it on earth. In other words, you're waiting to get to heaven to have a good time. Baby, enjoy the kingdom of God's life on earth. What is the kingdom of God like? Enjoying the benefits of God while impacting other people's lives. The kingdom of God benefits. So in other words, you're trying to wait to get to heaven so you can have some joy when God said you can have some joy right now. When you're trying to wait to heaven, you say, when I get to heaven, there will be no more sickness and disease. Let me tell you something. You can get to the point right now in this broadcast that you don't have to worry about sickness and disease right now in your body. That's what I'm talking about. We're talking about choosing life. Anything that goes against life, we must resist it. 
And the Bible said Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, one of the things he uses to take away the God kind of life is sickness. Sickness is an enemy of God to try to take away the type of life that you need to have. Psalms 91 verse 16 said it like this. He said, with long life will I satisfy you. Now, notice here, one of the benefits of having a good life is to have a long life. So when people say, I just want to have a life, I want to have a good life. Well, first of all, let's, let's understand that. Let's find out what the Bible says about a good life. Well, first of all, a good life is a long life. Why are you trying to get out here at 45? Why are you trying to leave this earth at 55? Listen here, the Bible promised you, listen to what I'm about to say. The Bible promised you a minimum of 80 years. 80 years, 80 years that God promised you on this earth. He said, with long life, would I satisfy you and show you my salvation? Now, notice this. If the Bible said, God says, with long life, would I satisfy you? Then that means that there has to be a desire. Hear what I'm about to say. There has to be a desire in every human being to desire to live long. Notice the Bible says, with long life would I satisfy you. It's almost like if I was physically hungry, if you give me some food, guess what it did? It just satisfied the desire that was already in me. Notice that there's a desire in every person that's watching me by broadcast, that's listening to me right now. There's a desire for you to live long. God put that in you. People say, well, no, you never know what the law is going to do. That's, that's, that's not the truth. That's, 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 not, that's a lie because the Bible tells you what he's going to do. He promised you a long life. And know what he said. He, I, with long life, will I satisfy you, and then I'm going to show you my salvation. So, in other words, every human being has a desire to live long. But no, he just didn't say living long. Living long so you can be satisfied. No, there's a desire in you to be satisfied to live long. Why are you saying that? Because sickness and disease wants to rob you of the life God wants you to have. When you look at the Old Testament, many of you already know this. Most people in the Old Testament live past 100 years. If you look at the Old Testament, some of them live at 300 years, 400 years, 500, 800 years. Folks live in the Old Testament. Now, let me tell you something. When, when there was a disobedient act, and the Bible talks about that God had to shorten man's life because of judgment, because of the curse. When the curse came into our society because of Adam disobedient, when it came into the world, man's life was shortened now. Notice that he started going from 900, then he started going on to 800, then he started going down to 700, then he started going down to 600. Every generation, the life started going down. And the judgment said this, that man would no longer live past 120, 120 years of age that the judgment said. That was a punishment. Now, hold up. Now, I know you're getting this like I'm getting this. Okay. If the punishment was that you can't live past 120, why are some folk dying at 35? I tell folks, even the punishment said you, you can't go past 120. So when people tell me, you know what, well, I'm just trying to get up out of here. How old are you? I'm 45. I'm 35. I'm 55. I need to get up out of here. That's not the will of God for you. That's not the will of God. God, the will of God is a minimum of 80 years on this earth. You got to start declaring that I shall live. I'm going to live the type of life that God wants me to live. Well, if I'm going to live it, I got to be around here for a while. You got to be around here to see your grandbabies come. You got to go around here to see your kids grow up. Come on, glory to God. You, God promised you the abundantly of life. Jesus said it. I come to give life. And they give it more abundantly. Then he said oh, uh, 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 over there that uh, 1 John 5, 13, when you have the Son, uh, Jesus, you have life, eternal life. So he come to give you eternal life. Then second of all, he comes to give you the abundant life. That's what I'm talking about right now. So if eternal life is already in me now, 
Why do I have to wait to get to heaven to enjoy the benefits? Think about it for a moment. See, some people are thinking, well, I won't get the eternal life until I physically die. No, not according to the Bible now. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 13, when you have Jesus, you have eternal life. You already have eternal life in you. Think of it like this. If we have two rooms, two rooms or two classrooms, in one classroom, one classroom is decorated in, 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 in all type of fine gold, and, and it has nice colors on it. And say the next classroom, uh, it's not decorated that well. Okay. Uh, uh, it has a little few decorations, but it has some uh, scratches and everything on it. So compare, see the second classroom as earth, the first classroom as heaven. I'm in the first classroom. I have eternal life. Some people say, well, you know what? I can't wait till I get to that second classroom so I can enjoy what I have. Let me tell you something. Eternal life is in you while you're on the earth. It's already in you. So in other words, because I have eternal life already, when I pass on, I'm just going to change scenery. That's all I'm changing. I still got the benefits of God. It's already there. You hear people say, I can't wait to get to heaven. I'm going to shout and dance. Baby, shout and dance right now because eternal life has already bought you the benefits right now. Why are we trying to wait to get to heaven to get the, uh, the benefits? Baby, when you get to heaven, it should be like, my God, glory to God. I just changed scenery. That's all I did. I already got eternal life. Well, how did you get it? I got Jesus. Jesus gave me eternal life. And because he gave me eternal life, I already have it. That's why I tell people, you already have it if you're saved, if you're born again. Eternal life is already on the inside of you. You have to know that. So if I have eternal life inside of me right now, then that means that guess what? What benefits comes with eternal life? Definitely no sickness and disease going to be in heaven. So if no sickness and disease going to be in heaven... Why do I have to put up with it? Now, preacher, hold up now, preacher. Now, you know, uh, you know now there's a lot of sickness and disease in this world. That is correct, but it doesn't have to come your way. Think about it for a moment. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rise up against you, you shall condemn. The weapon may be formed, but it doesn't have to prosper against you. Think about it right now. You are of a different kingdom. Think about it. You are of a different kingdom. Even we've had songwriters says, we're just pilgrims just walking through. You know, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. And we're just a pilgrim. Well, if I'm not from this, my God, then the benefits that God has me for the type of life that I need to have is not predicated based upon this world's society. It's based upon a heavenly society. Why? Because I got eternal life on the inside of me. I'm going to enjoy the life of God. Now, so when we're talking about enjoying the very life of God. The first thing is this. Okay, God, you promised me at least 80 years. At least with long life will you satisfy me and show me your salvation. Let's look at the word salvation for a moment. Because when you look at the word salvation, uh, according to Psalms 91 verse 16, the word salvation comes from the Hebrew word sozo or soteria. So when we talk about salvation... I am not just referring to the born-again experience. What do I mean by the born-again experience? Over in St. John, the third chapter, verse 3, the Bible talks about Nicodemus asked Jesus, how do I get to heaven? He said, one must be born again. Just like you were born of the flesh, you must be born of the spirit. So when I talk about salvation, in itself, in its entirety, it, 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 it includes salvation or the new birth or being born again. But also salvation means prosperity, it means deliverance, it means wholeness, it means nothing missing, nothing broken. So notice it, the Bible says, so with long life will he satisfy me and show me his prosperity. With long life will he satisfy me and show me his healing. Come on now. With long life will he satisfy me and show me his deliverance. Come on now. With long life, will he satisfy me and show me his, his shalom, peace, nothing missing, 
nothing broken. So notice here, when we're talking about I want to enjoy my life, this is the life that God wants you to do. A life where you can live a minimum of 80 years free from sickness, free from disease, free from poverty, free from lack. That is the life of God that we want to live on this earth. Not wait till you get to heaven to do it. My God, you got heaven on the inside of you. What you got to do is release heaven on out of you today. Glory to God. You got to release heaven in you to come up out of you so you can enjoy life. Because people are trying to find out, I'm trying to enjoy life. And they don't find out, if I get a new car, it's going to make me happy. Let me tell you something. The only person that's going to make you happy is Jesus Christ. And when he gives you the life that you have, glory to God, that's why God can have you stationed somewhere in one of the foreign countries. And people think you have the most boring life. But you can be saying, listen, I'm enjoying my life. How can you enjoy your life over in the foreign country? How can you enjoy your life doing this and doing that? Why? Because they don't understand life. They think life consists of things. My God. But life don't consist of things. It consists of a relationship with Christ. My God. That empowers me with benefits to impact people's lives. That's enjoying life. If you want life, that's what you want. Everything else is a facade. Everything else is what the world does. Do you really want to enjoy life the way God wants you to have it? Or do you want to enjoy life the way the world says it. You're not missing out when you got Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. My God, glory to God. My time is already up already. Listen, I need you to tune in next week. I need, for those that are watching us in the Miss Lou Vidalia area, tune in to us next week because I'm telling you, I'm not through with this message. We're calling choosing life because God has a type of life for you. Those that are watching us right now that got physical sickness and disease in your body. Why I'm preaching like that? Because the sickness will try to tell you it's time for you to get up out of here. But the devil is a liar. God commanded you to live. So right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for every person that's watching this broadcast that has sickness and disease in their body. I curse it. I command it to dry up and wood it up and be no more. You will not rob the people of God from the life of God that you want them to live on this earth. Heaven is on the inside of them. So, God, I release the power of God. I command every organ, every tissue, every blood cell to function properly according to the word of God. Father, we choose life. Satan, I rebuke you. I command you to get your hands off their body, off their mind. I rebuke every spirit of depression, oppression. I bind up every spirit of infirmity. I command you to loose your hold from the people of God. And Father, we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. I needed somebody to shout, I choose life out there today. You got to choose life. It's called the divine life of God. It's in you. You can do it. I'm telling you, oh my God, who glory to God. I, 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 tell, I get so caught up. I tell we don't have enough time in the broadcast to teach on this. That's why next week, come back next week because I'm definitely not finished. We're talking about choosing the very life of God. It's called the God kind of life. Everybody's looking for it, but guess what? God has it already, and it's through Jesus Christ. Remember, this is healing for today. We love you so much. Thank you for those that are sending us emails through Ministries at gmail.com. Thank you for your testimonies. Thank you for the wonderful things that you're sending us, amen, about that you, uh, what's happening in your life. If you got a testimony, go ahead and send it to us. That's Ministries at gmail.com. Love to hear from you, amen. The announcement, we'll put the information on the screen at this moment. That's Ministries at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. We want to hear your testimonies. We want to hear what God is doing in your particular life. Glory to God. www.clintonpotters.org. We love you so much. Thank God for what you're doing. Partners, we love you. Appreciate you so much. It is you that help us bring the healing power of God to the nations of this world. Thank you so much for what you're doing. If you're interested in part partnership, as you go up on that website, it gives you some valuable information or valuable information about what we're doing concerning partnership. Remember, my name is Apostle Potters. We call this Healing for Today. <laughs>